So meth is still a huge problem in this country. And that's something that you can really feel right here in Fresno, California. didn't exist. Meth is so cheap, it's everywhere now, it doesn't matter who has it. But like, what are we looking at right now? Every one of those people are on heroin or meth or both. Fresno has been a traditional place for a lot of methamphetamine over the years. What are the faces you see? Mostly Hispanic. Never been a worse drug. It truly impacted us because we started dealing with Mexican drug cartel traffickers. That started the epidemic. On a typical Saturday, how many syringes do you see? 20, 21,000. I have personally seen a higher rate of Latinos infected by this drug. A lot of us always say meth must be a hell of a drug because people give up everything for it. What a health emergency, and they're not addressing that. Their war on drugs didn't work. Here we are. This is the front line. You want to talk about something crazy? The laws on meth. I, honestly, I don't think you can help anybody that's not ready to be helped. Some people call Fresno a crater. It's really difficult to leave once you get here. You know, you would think that you would stop and see your kids and you would quit. But when that drug and demon has a hold of you, it's hard. You've been doing this for two decades. Do you think this crisis will ever end? This city is actually known to many as the meth capital of the United States. And it also happens to be that about half of its population are Latino. But the thing is, while the rest of the country is focused on what's happening on the US-Mexico border, right, everyone is focused on the larger immigration debate, Latinos here are facing a completely different reality, and that's a meth epidemic. So we came here to understand what's driving this community to this drug, right? What are the factors behind this crisis? The meth epidemic is so prevalent in Fresno that even upon our first shoot, we were already being exposed to it. To you. But I'm looking at you. Yeah. What's up? Yeah, yeah, we're not bothering them. When I was young, this didn't exist. You didn't see homeless people like that. Now, there was homeless people, but not like this. But like, what are we looking at right now? It's like, who are they? How do they well, end up there? I would say because of drugs. Every one of those people are on heroin or meth or both. And I know people from here, actually. Like, the guy who stays in that tent right there used to be the head chef at IHOP. No way. Yeah, no huh. way. No way. This guy over there used to be a general contractor. So if you had to describe your job, like, what do you what do? You do? Mm, I guess I'm in the pharmaceutical business. <laughs> that's it. I'm sorry. No, that's, hey. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I supplied them with their drugs. And I'm not proud of it, but like I said, I need money, and it's, if I don't do it, the next man will do it. So how much do they pay you for? It varies for every day. Like right now, I made maybe $320. Like what does a pound cost? Oh, would you like to see? Yes, actually. Well, for example, OK, this. So is this, is this the typical amount that you just No, no, this, this bag right here was full when I came out here this morning, about right there to me, about, you know, about two ounces. All right. Okay, and it's gone. This that's is a lot. This is how much this is left, and that's maybe $50. That's about $50 worth. Do you ever see Latinos around there? Because I know Fresno, there's a lot Latinos. of Latinos. Yeah, they're, they're over there. There's some over there. Have you seen this get worse over the years? Oh, no, it's worse in other places. This is nothing. Right here, I, I mean, there's, you should be at some other places than this. There's way worse. When people think about Fresno, it sounds like a lot of people think of it as the meth capital it is, of the world. It is. It is because it's central California, and Mexico's right there. The fact that we're so close to the border, right, that the I-5 runs Absol through the state. Absolutely. The you think that's correlated oh, to? Oh, absolutely. It's just like, OK, there would be no Africa if there wasn't a Nile, right? The Nile River is what, what brings life to, to that part of, of do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So, so Fresno brings life to meth. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Good way of putting it. It's like <laughs> a, yeah, absolutely. It's like a okay. umbilical cord to meth, a vein, mainline vein to meth. 
Fresno has long been experiencing a meth epidemic, and it's no coincidence. Located in the Central Valley, Fresno is a hub for many major highways and is surrounded by vast farmlands, making it an ideal location for meth manufacturing during the 1990s. However, most meth is now coming from Mexico. Over the years, Fresno has seen an increasing number of Latinx immigrants and migrant farm workers. Today, methamphetamine is the number one threat for the Central Valley Drug Task Force. And because Latinos make up half of Fresno's population, they're also being affected by this epidemic. To understand more about the Latino communities it's affecting, I headed to the Free Needle Exchange Clinic, an all-volunteer program that's been active in Fresno for the last 24 years. So this space is more than just a really cool-looking 1960s retro bus. This is actually Fresno's Free Needle Exchange Program, an initiative that swaps old syringes for new sterile ones. And it's also a place where you can see where a lot of meth and heroin users come just to take care of their most basic healthcare needs. While meth is usually smoked, some users also snort or inject the drug intravenously. Many of the issues the clinic treats are side effects from syringe usage. The line starts here. We have the syringe collection. So they dump they, their used yeah, ones in here. Yeah, they dump the used ones on top. They get dumped into the container here. Uh-huh. Then we hand out the new syringes. On a typical Saturday, how many people come in here? Today, we saw 149 people. Wow. And one, two, we did about 20, 21,000 today. So it was a little bit busy. 21,000 syringes. Yeah in two hours. The statistics for Fresno shows that we have some of the highest rates of injection drug use in the nation. Something like 173 injection drug users per 10,000, which is double the national average. Why is it important to have this type of program in the city specifically? Mainly to address uh, the rapid amounts of HIV, Hep C, um, abscesses. If we were here, um, like one abscess is going to cost at least 10, 15,000 in the emergency room. Out here, they're getting it for free. Hello. Hi, sir. Hey. How are you? Oh, fine. Is this pretty common, Doc, to see something like this? Yeah. Are you Latino? Yeah. Would you say a lot of people in the Latino community here are, are using meth? Yes. Is it a way to cope with other things? Go, go with problems. It's like putting band-aids on. Yeah, if you got about your problems, of course, you got bigger and better problems. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Better, but oh, now I can oh, just focus just... on this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, what we treat is the, all the occupational hazard that comes from being an injection drug user, whether it's heroin or whether it's methamphetamine. The last person I just incised his abscess was methamphetamine, and most probably that would have killed him if it burst inside. And you sit here, right, for almost every Saturday. What are the faces you see? It's a full spectrum, mostly Hispanic. See the black stuff that's in there? That's poison. What is that? It's, it's, it comes from the cutter that they cut it with and then it just never dissolves in the body. And so this is picking up the work of, uh, of the cartel because not having quality control because our government doesn't have the albonigas to stand up to <laughs> cartels uh, to, to control the industry. Their war on drugs didn't work. Here we are. This is the front line. This is charity. This shouldn't be charity. This should be public health. We have a uh, at-risk population needing health care. I smoke, like, practically every day. What a health emergency, and they're not addressing that. They should be ashamed of themselves. What we need are more resources for treatment. Ma'am, can I ask you, are you Latina? Is it, oh, you are Latina. And will you be getting high today after this? Probably later. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the pushback we've heard from some other people are that you guys may be encouraging more drug users to continue with that lifestyle. They're going to use. That's the, that's the nature of the issue of addiction. That no matter what the negative consequences are, they're going to continue with their drug use. So how do you compete against that? Yeah, how do you compete when there's not a lot of opportunities, basically looking at a warehouse job if you're lucky, or it's out in the fields. And, you know, it's not a good life uh, working in the fields. You know, like it's really rough. Migrant farm workers make up a significant amount of Fresno's Latino population and some are particularly vulnerable to this meth epidemic. Pastor Juan, a former drug addict himself, has a unique approach of reaching out to this community. 
¿Por qué quiere utilizar estas palabras en los vehículos y cuál es el mensaje que está intentando mandar a la gente? Consecuencias con dolor. Sí. Eh, la gente cuando se involucra lo que es drogas, alcohol y las pandillas, ellos no piensan en las consecuencias. Entonces hacemos una palabra de reflexión para ellos. Cuando esas personas quieren ayuda, hablan por teléfono y les ofrecemos lugar. Se les da cama, se les da comida, eh, se les ayuda en todas las áreas. Pero lo que nos, más nos importa es ver un cambio, una transformación en las vidas y en sus seres queridos. La casa de rehabilitación es, o sea, es lo que nos está a punto de enseñar, ¿no? Sí, es un, es un ah, lugar vale, normal vale. que rentamos yeah. para, para ayudar a gente. Personas que están trabajando, por ejemplo, en el campo, ¿verdad? Ellos eh, empiezan a animarse los unos a otros, las, las compañías, para que trabajen más rápido, que para que el día se les vaya más pronto. Es un factor, ¿verdad? Pero hay más. Hay personas latinas que vienen, se sienten solas, eh, con seres queridos en, en otro país, y, y la soledad también los lleva a eso. Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Hola, señor, ¿qué tal? Paola, encantada. Paola, encantada. Y entonces, aquí... ¿Viven todos ustedes? ¿Viven aquí? Sí, sí. Él fue víctima del cristal, trabajaba igual en el campo. Sí. Y todo eso lo llevó a él a destruirse, pero como le digo, él ya tiene... ¿Qué, qué tiempo lleva aquí usted? Un año. Él lleva un año, llegan sí. bien flaquitos y, y miren, ahora bien saludables. ¿En serio? Gracias, yeah, yeah. Llegan, llegan este... Yeah. ¿Por qué decidieron meterse en ese, con esa droga? Pues hay veces que también la autoestima, la autoestima de la, de, de, que le tienen a uno y ves que lo lleva pues a eso también. Exacto. Todas las camas están llenas. Sí, eh, tenemos, increíble. La casa tiene tres recámaras, sí. dos recámaras más que están wow. este, eh, ocupadas. Él viene apenas llegando. Él tiene apenas cuatro días. Sí. Llegó el jueves, el jueves en la noche. Eh, viene, fue víctima uh -huh. de la MED. Viene todo flaco. Sí. ¿Y ¿Cómo, eh, cómo te llamas tú? Freddy. Freddy, ¿qué tal, Freddy? ¿Y has utilizado la metanfetamina? Lo que es el cristal. Sí, sí, sí. sí. Es lo que... ¿Y, ¿Y cómo te metiste con, con esa droga? Pues ya ves que el descuido de uno pues, me llevó a ese tipo de vicio. Pues, pues ese vicio pues, me, me ha estado destruyendo. Pues. Mejor uno por estar solo. Y... Sí, muchas veces lo hacen por, por la soledad eh, y sobre todo también las amistades, porque el, tristemente, lamentablemente, ¿Eh? esta droga se mueve mucho en el trabajo. Ya. Es triste. Es ¿Tú triste. trabajas en las cosechas? Sí, exactamente. ¿Y ves que hay muchas otras personas que están en tu misma situación? No, no, de verdad, sí. ¿De verdad? No, no soy el único, como dices. Lo vemos mucho. Claro. Y, y una pregunta para ustedes. O sea, ¿Por qué es tan fácil conseguir la metanfetamina? O sea... Por lo barato. Por lo barato, este, esa es una de las causas. Sí. One of the reasons meth is so prevalent is due to how cheap it is to make compared to other drugs, allowing for larger quantities of it to be produced. I met with narcotics expert Robert Pinal to find out how meth makes its way into the Central Valley. Probably one of the most dangerous drugs that has ever impacted this country really was methamphetamine. When I started in meth investigations, it was $10,000 a pound. Now it's around $1,200 to $1,400 a pound. We never used to see that. But there's so much methamphetamine. Mm. I can show you. Look how big so those, look that? how big, that's crystal meth. Look how okay. big those crystals are right here. Holy moly. We would drive the cartels down into Mexico to manufacture, but we still had tons of methamphetamine coming across our borders. So walk me through that. How does meth make its way to the Central Valley? Well, first of all, what they do is this. So you take that crystal methamphetamine that you made, and they dissolve it completely to a solution. You take a pickup truck that has an external fuel tank in the back. You fill half of that tank with water, dissolve the methamphetamine in water, fill up the rest of the tank with diesel fuel, seal it up, and cross the border. Once they come across the border, if they were to get stopped, and they were to check that fuel tank, and you only smell the diesel fuel, the lower layer is all water with meth dissolved in it. When the methamphetamine arrives here, Uh, from Mexico and it's been dissolved in solution, what they're going to do is they're going to go to a recovery lab. And when they go to a recovery lab, this is basically what it looks like. They're going to go in, lots of times they'll just rent a house, mm -hmm. and all they're doing is putting the meth that was in solution, they're going to eventually mix it with a solvent, and they're going to let the solvent evaporate, and all the crystals come back again. Some blame the current epidemic on the controversial passing of Proposition 47 which decriminalizes drugs like methamphetamine, leading to fewer arrests and less court-ordered rehab programs. You want to talk about something crazy. The 
laws on meth. Let's talk about the laws on meth. They passed a law called Prop 47 that if the cops came right now and found that all this, these drugs on us right now, none of us would go to jail. They'd give you a ticket and send you on your way and leave you with your meth. They don't even take Is that it. a good thing? No, absolutely not. It's a good thing for criminals and it's a good thing for drug addicts, but as for the society as a whole, that's horrible. Because what that did is now kids have meth. No one's scared to have it anymore. You'd have to have a whole lot. So there's no deterrent. People aren't really scared to. No, absolutely not. And they did that all to fix their jail population problems. That's all. Some people call Fresno a crater. It's really difficult to, to leave once you get here. It is definitely a magnetic. So a lot of these homes like this, this is pretty typical. Having them bunched up like this, no real markings, multiple families living in the same general area. I have personally seen a higher rate of Latinos infected by this drug than I have other races. Okay, so what's going on exactly? My sister. Okay. You'll see a lot of addiction. It tends to follow generations. If you have one generation who's heavily addicted, chances are very good that the next generation, they'll suffer the same consequences, the same issues, because they're running into the same environment. Have any of your loved ones been affected by, by meth or, or drug? They have. I have quite a few members of my family and those that are close to me that have been affected. Is that what sort of made you want to be in law enforcement? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I knew from a young age I wanted absolutely nothing to do with that lifestyle at all. Hey there, are you Mark? Yes, Hi, Mark. Good evening, how are you? Is this the trailer? Yes. I didn't take this job because I wanted to arrest every single person with an addiction. I can offer a little bit of guidance if they would just let me in. So how are you seeing that Latinos here are being directly impacted by the, this meth epidemic that we're seeing? It's so many different factors compounded into each other yeah. that make the perfect, perfect storm. And all you need is that one opportunity to, here, try something good. This will take the pain away. This will make you forget all of the other issues that you're facing in life. And if that works the first time, you're gonna keep on chasing it. And then eventually it just, it poisons your life to the point where it starts to feed off of you and then it starts to feed on the rest of your family. And the next thing you know, the problem is a lot bigger than you are. Which problem do you start with? You know, do you start with the immigration issues first? Do you start with the self-esteem issues first, with the confidence? Do you start with the educational part and help people, helping people become more aware of the resources that are out there? It, it's just the chicken or the egg. The Valley makes meth readily available. And for the Latinx community, it's an accessible way to cope with the realities and hardships affecting Latinos in Fresno. Just understand, anytime you're gonna be using meth, you're gonna put yourself in the stroke zone. Look at yourself in the selfie or something like that. It might be the last time you see yourself. You've been doing this for two decades. Do you think this crisis will ever end? There's hope. There's definitely hope. But I guess we all suffer from PTSD, and that's post-traumatic stress disorder of the reality that we live in, and uh, people are just trying to medicate themselves.